why is this a great opportunity for you? Why is this a, a fit? And just kind of what do you know about El Paso and, and the Chihuahuas coming into this thing? Yeah, I, uh, you know, in my career, I've taken, you know, I've gone all over the country, uh, spent most of the time on the East Coast, um, and then raised a family throughout this whole thing. So, um, you know, another, you know, chapter in the book, another adventure for my wife, Julie, my uh, son, Evan, and my daughter, Clara, you know, just to, you know, be in the Southwest, uh, be in the El Paso community and, and be a Chihuahua. So we're, we're excited for the opportunity. And uh, what, what this means to me is uh, it's a, just another opportunity in professional baseball to impact, you know, people, uh, build some relationships with, you know, whether it's Padres people or Chihuahuas people or people in the El Paso community. It's, it's about relationships. You know, there's so many relationships uh, that I've built and rebuilt throughout my career. And, and you know, to be able to come in and, and impact, you know, people at the AAA level or community in El Paso, we are ecstatic and really looking forward to the opportunity to be in with the Padres and the Chihuahuas. Okay, next question for Jared. Thank you, Andy. Brett with the El Paso Times, I see you unmuted. Do you have uh, something to ask? <laughs> sure. Just talk about the decision uh, to, to join the Padres organization. I guess it's kind of represents a change for you, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, um, I mean, I was with the the Tampa Bay Rays as a player and coach for over 20 years and, and uh, for Seattle, the hometown team to give me an opportunity to go to the back of the big leagues and uh, come back home and put on that hometown Mariner uniform uh, for three years was, was fantastic. And uh, it was a great opportunity for me, a growth moment um, to be kind of uncomfortable uh, and, and learn how to be comfortable while being uncomfortable. And, and what I mean by that is I wasn't the manager. I, mean, I was a manager in the minor leagues with the, with the Rays and, and come up through, you know, you know, all the different stops uh, and then, you know, having the two fantastic seasons that we did in Durham winning back-to-back -back championships and, you know, bringing that winning tradition back to Durham. Um, you know, I, I learned a lot in Seattle. So they, they taught me a lot, you know, Scott service taught me a lot. And, uh, you know, I, um, for, for me to, to move on and, and be able to go to the Padres organization and, and back to AAA where, you know, I know I've had success and, and also, you know, I can impact, you know, an organization, uh, the Padres organization, but also the people. And then, you know, the, the goal is to win a world series at the major league level and, uh, being at that AAA level, it's a very, very impactful, important position where, you know, guys are going up and down and, and you're managing people, um, and build those relationships along the way. So, um, th for me and my career, um, to go back to AAA, uh, I'm, I'm not worried about that. It's about me being in a, in a spot where I can impact people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, John. Yeah, I'm sorry, Tim. I have trouble uh, finding the, the raise your hand symbol. I, I have a question for Jared. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Oh, you know, Tampa's the Tampa Bay Rays are, are so well known for having one of the best farm systems and development in, in all of baseball. What was the biggest thing that you took out of your experience with them? Yeah, I mean, as a, I grew up there as a player. So for me, when I showed up as an 18 year old in that organization, you know, there were, there were mentors for me and, you know, to go from Olympia, Washington, all the way to St. Petersburg, Florida, as an 18 year old, uh, I was impacted by, you know, mentors. And those people were still there when I started my coaching career, then they guided me along the way. Um, so for me, it was about family, it was about relationships. And, and you know, I grew up there in that organization uh, from a developmental standpoint. Um, you know, they were all about the player, um, getting those players better, whether it was work, whether it was communication. And, you know, they always wanted to win at every level. And, you know, there, there's a there's a fine line between, you know, winning at all costs and developing and winning. So I think, you know, one of the biggest things that I learned was how to develop while winning. Jared, what would you say is your kind of managerial style? Obviously, being a, a former big leaguer, I'm sure that probably plays little bit into it, but obviously the game has evolved. A lot of analytics now go into it. Um, do you pay attention to that kind of stuff or just what can we expect from your kind of just from a managerial standpoint? I think I've taken a lot from, you know, all the different coaches and, and, and people that I was around as, as a player and a coach. And, and, 
you know, trying to take little bits and pieces from everybody. Uh, it's kind of molded me into the, the, the person, the manager that I am, uh, the, the person that I am. So I think first and foremost, it's, it's communication. You know, it comes down to being able to have, you know, the, the heart to heart, the, the stern conversations with the player, you know, holding them accountable. Um, and, you know, and then it's a passion for winning and, you know, a quick story, you know, for me, when I got to AAA, I, I really, you know, thought I could allow the, the players to, you know, manage the clubhouse and go out there and, and kind of do their own thing. But now what, what I learned over, over two years, the first two years there was that they needed structure and they needed, you know, constant communication and we needed to promote, you know, competition and competing to win. Um, so when I changed my kind of approach that, after that second year, knowing we had some young players coming up uh, and holding them more accountable and to a higher standard, you know, some really, really cool things happened. So I, I got to learn as a individual, uh, it was kind of a growth moment for me about accountability, communication, that development we've already talked about. Um, so as far as my style goes, I'm, I'm very loose. I love to have fun. I like to smile. Uh, my mentor, Bill Evers, uh, told me, you know, loosen up, you got to smile more. So uh, from from day one as a as a manager, it's you know, trying to smile and, and keep those uh, the players uh, you know having fun because when you're having out there you're out there having fun and you're loose uh, you're going to play to the best of your ability uh, and obviously there's a fine line between goofing off and having fun but it's professional baseball and we're going to go out there and, and and compete and so there's there's definitely a high expectation. Real quick, you mentioned Bill. Who else kind of has been a big influence on on you? Some some names. Yeah, so when I showed up in the Gulf Coast League in 1996 as a little skinny little 18 year old, uh, Mitch Lukovic was my pitching coach, and uh, eventually, you know, moved on to be the farm director there in Tampa. And um, you know, he, he's you know he, he's still a, a close contact for me and somebody that you know uh, you know helped kind of guide me to be you know grow up. Um, 18 years old, you know, helped me get to the big leagues, and you know, Bill Levers was my first manager. Charlie Montoya um, was my second manager. Um, then eventually a roommate of mine as we became coaches or I was a coach and we were roommates in spring training and just definitely a mentor for me and, and, and somebody that helped, you know, really kind of raise me. You know, I was so far away from home and, uh, you know, those, those three guys, Tom Foley is an infield guy um, and just a, a, a human being. I mean, he treated me the right way with a lot of respect. And then, Probably uh, you know, Steve Henderson, another person in the organization that was there a long time uh, and helped me from an offensive standpoint, but also just taught me work ethic. Um, there were many times we were, you know, stuck in the cages late after a golf, you know, a day game, Gulf Coast League game. And him and I always joke about it now that, you know, he used to cost me dinners because we were, you know, we were in the cage so late at night uh, after long days. So, you know, those are uh, just a few of the names that really impacted me in the Rays organization. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah, go ahead, John. Sorry, I have one more uh, follow-up question. Is you know you've had experience at all different levels of the minor leagues, and whenever you know you kind of get to AAA, the players are a little older. A lot of them had more experience. Does that change your style at all about how you would manage, you know, that level as compared to like high A or double A? I thank you for your previous answer too. Yeah, yeah. Referencing that, the, you know, the previous story, I think you know I went to the Arizona Fall League after the 2016. Triple A season went to uh, the Arizona Fall League and I was around players from other organizations, a little bit younger players, um, and I knew I had to make a change uh, personally as, as far as how I communicated, um, how I developed uh, the people, but also the relationships. And I was, you know, I got to got to know you know a lot of new coaches and new organizations, so it was a great learning experience for me, and it really helped kind of you know push me to that next level. So. Going back to your question, I think, you know, when I initially got to AAA, I, I was hoping that the older players, you know, could could manage themselves a little better. But I just I understood and I knew that they needed a little more structure, and a little more accountability um, going forward. And that's when I made that change and and some you know good, really, really good things happened. So I think, you know, coaching, you know, you're going to have to you know make adjustments to whatever you know, staff you have, whatever, you know, personalities of the different players you have and, and all that. So you have to make adjustments along the way. And uh, I don't think one style um, is the right way to go. You have to make adjustments along the way. All right. I'll take a couple more questions. 
Have you been to Bendale Paso before, or is this side unseen? Great question. Yeah, yeah. Let's see, 97 and 98, driving from Olympia, Washington to St. Petersburg, you know, making my trek across the country for spring training. I uh, stopped in El Paso was one of my, one of my stops, uh, overnight stops. And, um, but that's, that's it for me as far as um, just a quick overnight stop and grabbing a quick bite to eat. Um, so I'm looking forward to, you know, exploring, you know, the, the city and the, the different opportunities for food. And uh, I know uh, my son uh, loves to be outdoors and, and hike and everything. So he's already looking forward to the different, the different hikes and national parks and different uh, adventures that we can, we can have. And, and I'm, I know my wife, Julie is, is really looking forward to, uh, you know, getting involved in the community if possible and, and, uh, and being a part of it and, and learning about, you know, what El Paso, you know, has for us. I had one last one, Jared, obviously everything going on right now, there's kind of a dark cloud over major league baseball and, and everything that's kind of going on, obviously not, necessarily your position but I guess just how much of a want is there to get spring training started on time regular season started on time and then also just um how that affects the El Paso Chihuahuas you and and that season because obviously minor league baseball and major league baseball kind of operate on two different what do you call that just you know players unions that sort of thing yeah I mean I think we're all looking forward to uh you know baseball you know getting back um on the field and you know, we can all hope that, you know, spring training is going to, going to start on time and, and they're negotiating and doing their best to, you know, to get, you know, get things right. So, you know, I think we're all looking forward to baseball and um, yeah, I mean, whenever, whenever the El Paso season starts, that's what I'm, uh, I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to it. All right. Any last questions for Jared? All right. Thank you all for being here. Um, Jared will stick around for just a few more minutes to tape a radio interview, but uh, to the other media members, we'll be in touch regarding uh, the team's schedule when, when April gets closer. So thanks for being here. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Take care.